there's a saying here that every Dominican carries a little bit of Haitian behind his ear, which is nothing that's more to say that every Dominican probably has a little bit of black blood in it. About 10% of the Dominican population is pure black and probably another 10% pure white. And then you have a, the gamut of mulattoes. There's a very particular kind of mix here called a uh, habao, which is a mix of black and even blonde. And then, of course, you have a little bit of remnants of the Indian population, very little. Probably the, call it the 50% is what we call canela, which is cinnamon color, and that is a big sector of the population. My name is Jorge Pineda. I've been in journalism for 25 years in the Dominican Republic, and I run the newspaper Dominican Today. We were crossing this dry creek along the border, and this boy on a donkey makes it his way up, like diagonally up the cliff, and comes up to us. And I ask him, uh, in like, where you know where are you from? He goes, Oh, I'm from that village over there. And I go. Isn't that Haiti? Oh, yeah. And this is the border? He goes, border? What border? <laughs> he didn't know there was a border there. And it was just a path used by military trucks to supply the little border posts along those mountain chains. And just nobody used it. The border was just as desolate as it is today. You know, just nobody there. People come across freely. The military can't do anything about it. It's just too much ground to cover. It's just too rugged and hasn't changed in since, that, what, 30 years almost. And that's why I saw extreme poverty. Right across the border, you have this scene, is really chilling, of how run down a little town could be, how lack of, you know, any activity. You know, you, yeah, there were people living there, you can tell, but it seemed like there was no life, you know. And the town was not that small, but it just, economically, it was dead. You know, children begging, or pregnant women carrying a, an infant, and young men sitting 100 yards from the border gate into the Dominican Republic, just like waiting for somebody to say, hey, come on, I need somebody to, you know, chop a, a field. que no tiene trabajo en Haití. Por eso que tiene mucho haitiano que fui en, en Dominicana busca mi vida. Sí. sí. Ahora los haitianos, todos los haitianos pasan mucho calamidad. Entonces se salió a Haití, se fue para en la República Santo Domingo. Entonces yo quiero los, los americanos ayudar a todos los haitianos para poder hallar muchos trabajos para vivir más eh, posible de la mañana. Let's face it, small islands overcrowded, so this, close, this proximity between Haitians and Dominicans, again, it creates conflicts. And you look, you look around, you've probably seen enough of the Dominican Republic to know, Dominicans have a certain color, you know, they're dark, they're, they're light, they're lighter, and Haitians are all black, you know, to start with. And then you have the difference in language. And you have the difference in, in religion. It's like saying, let's fuse Mexico and the United States into one country. And now you got Haitians which need to get a place to live. The only place you can afford is a slum. So you have this in the slum, you have a lot of conflicts too. They gustan Haitians. No. Por qué? 
Que yo, yo quería que, que quitarnos eh, eh, esto aquí y, y habían tres padres de la patria y pelearon con los haitianos. Y, y lo mandan para Haití. ¿Y por qué? Porque nos quitan el que ven de país. ¿Conoces haitianos? Sí, es haitiano. ¿A tu amigo? Sí, ese sí. Y a veces cuando ellos hablan, yo no respondo. Cuando uno está en la guagua, ellos abren mal. Algunos abren mal. Yo no respondo. Para mí, siempre le decía, Señor, tapa mi boca para que no responda, porque tiene que ser así en todo. En eso. And of course, you see the, the extreme poverty of Haiti in our streets. You know, people live in ramshackle housing and whatever they can, you know, whatever sticks they can gather, tie together, make a house. Very poor conditions. That's probably the most overcrowded that I've seen in this area. So I would say at least 25 to 30 Haitians are living there right now. These people are making the bare minimum wage, but the minimum wage applies to Dominican workers. And that's another point of conflict. You know, a, a builder or a farm may not pay a Haitian the minimum wage because they can get away with it. Uh, if he decides to try to cheat the Haitians on their pay, the Haitians are not going to complain to the police. They're not going to complain to their Dominican foreman because if they complain, well, there's, too many, there's so many other Haitians you can hire. At that level, it's not skilled labor yet. And again, you know, cheap manual labor. And you can't get cheaper manual labor than, you know, 10 million people starving across the border. So. Major border, uh, border towns, the Dominican Republic hold uh, market week. They come in without restriction under a military and police supervision. Uh, of course, they restrict in certain areas of the towns and Dajabon, which is the northwest uh, of this country. Uh, it's the best example. It's a big town and it's free trade um, Fridays and Mondays. People has to come here to buy the some food, to buy the something for go in Haiti because in Haiti don't have nothing. If I'm Asian, I wanna sit down in my country. I wanna work in my country. So when I go to work there to Dominican Republic, every Dominican say you are Asian. I don't, I don't want the black. I don't like the black. I'm very sad for that. He say me no. You have to go in your country because you are Asian. He wanna fight with me for that. I don't know because I'm black. The Dominican is white. You know. For that, for the color, the Dominican don't like the color black. Only that, because I don't know. Racial issues probably not not as uh, stark as the social, cultural, because most Dominicans are black anyway, and the mingling with Haitians is, it's I would say, is seamless.
Fallando y no el borra, me robo tus zorras. Si te comete un pie, yo me comiento más zamorra. Vine de esa fina, rompete fue que vine. No te hablo de eso para que no te lo imagines bien. Mojo y no opines, conmigo no adivines. Se van a desmayar que no me vean en el cine. Y que te digan que el lápiz no es de nada, que dejen de llamar, que con él no graba. Y no, toda la menor ya. Yeah.